It's a big one for their space and security business, definitely. Um, this is eight years in the making, and they were in the final stretch, and this was a key milestone. So, um, yeah, uh, can, not making it to orbit and not making it to the correct orbit and making it to the space station is a big deal. Can they rejig things? Is, is this a small adjustment, or is this a nail in the coffin for this? We don't program? know. I mean, this, is a, this was a big milestone. This was a big test. Like, this was the dress rehearsal, right? So eight years culminating in this milestone. And so to miss this is a, is a pretty big deal, I think. This is really fresh, so I think we're waiting to see exactly how this shakes out. But um, already, you know, SpaceX was, was talking about launching a Q1 next year. Boeing was out to mid-2020. This might push them out um, past 2020, um, leaving SpaceX the sole uh, launch vehicle for U.S. astronauts. I was just going to ask, does this help SpaceX? Not that they've had sort of a spotless history with some of their launches as well, but does this give them a leg up? Certainly. So um, they were already in the lead, and I would say that they are now firmly in the lead. Like I said, you know, they were already planning on launching a Q1. They've already done this milestone. They've already passed this milestone. So I think that what's most interesting about the, today and what's so significant about today is that we live in a completely different paradigm than, you know, eight years ago when this program started and when we shut down uh, the, the space shuttle program. Uh, today, we're not reliant on one company or one program. Uh, we now have, I mean, we're tracking uh, 500 space companies that have raised $25 billion over just the last 10 years. Space, or sorry, Boeing has a setback today, but SpaceX is still pushing ahead and they're going to be launching in Q1. But that said, without the sort of centralization and organization that, that NASA traditionally brought, has the U.S. fallen a little bit behind it, its rivals or, or perhaps is it less far ahead than it used to be of its rivals in, in the kind of whole space arena? I think we've stuttered in our... Um, uh, benchmarking against ourselves. So uh, the space shuttle program, when it was canceled in 2011, um, that was pretty abrupt, and we expected to have this commercial capability online in a couple of years. That didn't happen. So now it's been eight years, right? And so we've had this gap. And during this period, we've been paying um, the Russians $80 million a seat to get us to the space station until these capabilities come online. Remember, Boeing was the safe bet here. Uh, SpaceX was a relatively unknown quantity when this started, and Boeing was the safe bet. And it, and it shows they got twice as much money to do essentially the same work that SpaceX did, and now SpaceX is farther ahead. Charlie, when you look at the landscape for space, you have some companies that you could be invested in, certainly Boeing, one part of their business. Um, but then you also have a Virgin Galactic doing something different than today's launch, at least. Is this an interesting area for you because the future is so unknown and, and the opportunities could be vast? Yeah, as, as value investors, this has got a lot of the things that we don't like. It has uh, very little proven. Uh, it has a lot of different competitors. It has huge upfront capital expenditures and R&D budgets and no clear winners. That was one of the beauties of the old NASA programs is they would pick a provider and pick many providers to spread the jobs out around the country. And that world has become much more competitive today, much tougher to pick a winner. What about Boeing stock, though? I think, you know, I would have said before today that everything that had gone wrong could go wrong, and then this happened. Uh, as a good Chicago company, we think it's very well positioned. We think long-term, very well positioned. It's going to be bumpy, but I think now, with all of this bad news, now is a great time to be looking at it. Chad, just want to pivot back to the space uh, investments you guys have made. Are they all private market invest investments, or do you start to see a bit of value in the public market in terms of pure space plays, whether that's Virgin Galactic or others? This has been a monumental decade for uh, commercial space, without a doubt. Ten years ago, there was no entrepreneurial activity in space to speak of. It was really just a handful of defense contractors. But like I said, I mean, that is, that is no longer the case today. We're tracking hundreds, 500-plus companies that have raised, you know, 25-plus billion dollars. So right now, it's, we're in the early phases, right? So we're seeing the first companies raise venture capital. Some of those are going on to be acquired, and um, we've just seen the first ones start to go public. Um, but I think we're just scratching the surface here. We're on the edge of something really big.